present you with these roses. To present you with these roses. Don't forget the curtsy. <coughs> That's it. Yeah. Fetch! Can I try the dress on again when we get home, Mum? Of course you can. Where's that daft dog gone? Anita! No, be careful! Don't get too close! Pops! Popsy! Popsy! Anita? Anita? Anita! 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 Oi, we have to chip in for that. Are you saying I'm not worth a cup of tea? After all the things I do for you girls? What's wrong with Edna's trolley? Well, I couldn't find her. Cheers. I hear Lizzie's taking you in as a lodger. She must be desperate. Very funny. Doc Goodwin's got her in there as well. well. You'll have to mind your P's and Q's then. I know. Oh, I've been looking everywhere for you. There's an emergency call. Right. Excuse me. Just stand back, please. Stand back, just to be safe, all right? Hey, we'll get to her there. Don't worry. OK, there's a young girl on a ledge about 20 feet down, um, doesn't seem conscious, losing a lot of blood from somewhere. Please. Can we get to her? Ariel. It won't be easy. Please. We've got a rope on the van, though. I'll have a go. OK. Move! People love to see the floats all decked out for festival, don't they? Hey, they don't appreciate the hard draft that goes into it. No, they don't. Hey, gag in for a mug of tea. You don't fancy brewing up when you have a minute. Look, I'm busy. Why don't you go and get us one off trolley? Because I can't find Edna. The old girl ain't turned up. She won't be turning up anymore from what I've just heard. What? Harper's given the WRVS the push. Hey, Steve. Dig your reels in, all right? And once I'm down, lower the doctor's bag down, right? OK, let's go. Be very careful, Frankie. Gentle does it, come on. Right. Keep coming, mate. Down we go. Manage me, right? Doctor's coming now.
Find those rocks. Find them. You're okay. I think I'll be doing this when I have a cornflakes this morning. <laughs> you down? Right. Hello, Anita. What's the action? I'm a sleepy time, baby. Lot of blood. We need to get her off here as soon as possible. Right. Okay, get the doctor up first, and then lower the stretcher down, Steve. Can we get her up on a stretcher. There's no other way. Go on, you get up. Nice. On you go. Right. Everything's going to be all right now, darling. I'm a sleepy time, baby. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you both. Well done, Frankie. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Rose, Matron says you have an emergency operation. A uh, young girl's fallen off a cliff. Damn fool thing to do. A uh, head wound, you need to be in casualty. The nun said he had to come in and see a doctor. He fell asleep at the wheel. Only for a second. What nun? The one he knocked off a bike. She's a nurse here. You put my lights up, Lizzie. Uh, yeah, a patient of yours, Arthur Graham. His wife's been on, says he's been chucking up all night. Oh, well, I better get over there then. Hang on, Doctor. What about him? He nearly killed a nun on a bike. Oh, Mr. Sadler, if you both take a seat, I'll see him as soon as I get back. Severe laceration to the lower inner thigh, and I think the femoral artery's been torn. Possible ankle fracture. Have you given her analgesia? Yes, pethidine, 50 milligrams IV, 20 minutes ago. Right, just 0.6 of a milligram of atropine, please, Darth. That leg's a real bloody mess. As soon as you can, everyone. Mrs. Graham, I was just on my way to see you. Doctor, I'm so sorry. I couldn't wait. He's getting worse. How long has he been shaking like this? Since after he was sick, the second time, middle at night. OK, let's get him inside. Mr. Graham. There's a brew coming for you, all right? Do you want to use the telephone, let your husband know? I'm divorced. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not. She will be all right, won't she? She's been so excited. Help me make a dress. Hardly able to sleep, counting the days. Hey, come on now. Come on, she'll be all right. There you are. I made it myself. In here, please. Vendy snacks. I beg your pardon? Our new drinks vending machine. Over there. How serious is it? Might she lose the leg? Let's just get on with it, shall we?
This is the future of convenience catering. Well, it won't make tea like Edna does. It won't block up the corridors chatting for hours on end either. Give over. Visitors and patients like the natter with her. One can have one's coffee at the press of a button now, not at the whim of the town gossip. I'm hoping it might improve efficiency all round. Excuse me. Dr Goodwin's got an emergency admission. You'll have to wait. We've done nothing but wait. Would you swab the wound, please, nurse? Very, very gently. Right, let's have a look. Now, gotcha. There we are, thank you. <sighs> Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Were there any other symptoms last night? I said he had uh, pins and needles in his mouth and his tongue went numb. Well, some form of food poisoning seems likely. Did you eat together last night? Aye. And you seem fine? Well, we didn't eat the same. He had fish. I ate bread and cheese. Can't stand fish myself. Where did you buy the fish? <laughs> he caught it. Goes fishing. Was from the big public pond, I think. Was there any other fish left over? Went in bin. Well, the dustman took that this morning. Oh. All right, sister. Ah, it's nothing. The patient of yours knocked me off my bike. Driving instructor, would you believe? Oh, Mr. Sadler. <laughs> Is he sleeping all right? You can't wake him. Snores like a pig. And that's still going on, is it? Oh, earplugs are useless. It's like the Battle of the Somme. Well, perhaps you should consider sleeping in another room. I am in another room. When he snores, walls are no protection. Was this the first time you've dozed off at the wheel? Yeah. I just felt tired, you know. I don't know why you're tired. It's me who gets no sleep. Oh, we'd better admit you for tests, and then we can make sure you haven't suffered any concussion. Foot's pinked up nicely. Dorsalis pedis, nice and strong. Off she goes. Looks like that arterial graft did the trick. Right, I've got to catch up on some house calls. Excuse me. I, uh... I know I don't show my appreciation very often, but, um... You did a terrific job in there. Thank you. Young girl like that should have two legs. How else is she going to catch her husband? Temperature's quite high, I'm afraid. I've just been bathing his rash, trying to cool him down. He says it's very itchy and irritating. Well, with chicken pox, it usually is, I'm afraid. But don't worry, Keith. You're going to be all right. Um, you both had chicken pox? Yeah. I had it as a lad. Good, good. Right, uh, well, I'll pop in and see him in the morning. Call me if the fever gets any worse. Well done, Keith. It wasn't too bad, was it? We need to pin down the cause. I'd like some bloods taken for the lab, a stool, nail and hair samples. I'll organise that, Doctor. I'd also like some swabs taken from Mr Sadler's mouth. Can you see to that, sister? Certainly. My pleasure. Swabs? What does that entail? Oh, don't worry now, Mr Sadler. It's not quite as painful as being knocked off your bike. I'll just get the instruments. Anita's recovery will take time and be rather uncomfortable, I'm afraid. She's alive with both legs. It's all that matters. Thank you. Just thought I'd see how my favourite girl's doing. She'll be fine. Thanks to you. You were very brave. Nah, it's all part of the service. Only thing I have to worry about now is telling her she can't be the Rose Queen anymore. I'm sure we can work something out. Don't worry. Right, said Fred, both of us together, one each end and steady as we go. Ooh. 
Tried to shift it, couldn't even lift it. We was getting Ah, uh, a convert. Sampling the delights of Vendy snacks, eh, Hopkirk? There've been complaints, and I'm just testing it for myself. I've heard no complaints. Well, you can hear some now. We're busy enough as it is without making my job worse. How do you mean? I'm a receptionist, not a flaming change machine. I've had folk asking me for sixpences all afternoon. I'm in the firing line here. One lad got very shirty because he wanted sugar and didn't get any. Well, because he pressed the wrong button. A woman got soup instead of coffee. It doesn't do soup. Well, she said it tasted like oh, it. It's dishwater. You should get rid of it. Forget that. You're nothing but a pair of Luddites. No, we're not. We're a pair of Opkirks. I'm proud of it. Has anyone checked out that new of yours yet, sister? Oh, everyone's too busy to worry about a little thing like this. That's what you know as well as I. Being brave isn't always sensible. What would you like me to? Oh, well, if it's not putting you out, Doctor. No, of course not. Come on. Right. Sit yourself down on the couch and, uh, yes, you'd better slip your stocking off. Just go through. I'll close the door. That's your drink. We're meeting Frankie. I've hardly seen him all day. I expect he's had his hands full, one way or another. How you doing? Right. Let's take a look, shall we? Yes, well, that's, uh, that's a very nasty bruise, isn't it? How does this feel? Not too painful? No, not at all. Hmm. Well, it's not too swollen, which seems to suggest that the cartilage isn't damaged. Just straighten your leg for me, will you, please? OK, that's... that's fine. I think the ligament is just a little strained, which means no running about for a couple of days. All right, sister? Yes, Doctor. Right. Any luck, chaps? Let's have a look. And a fine one it is, too. Good morning. So, did Mr Sadler keep everyone awake last night with his snoring? Indeed, he did not. We hardly heard a sound out of you, did we? When can I go home, Doctor? Uh, there's a few more tests that we need to do today. I'm suffering from serious boredom. You'll be suffering from more than that if you fall asleep at the wheel again. <laughs> Please, just uh, try and be patient. Thank you. And, uh, Mr Wayne? Still complaining of double vision. And he has the numbness in the mouth. I need to identify what's poisoned you. Now, if the fish from the public pond were the cause, we'd have had other cases. Are you sure there's nothing else you can tell us? OK. Well, Matron, do we know when Mr Graham's test results will be back? I marked them urgent. I'll let you have them as soon as they arrive, Doctor. Thank you. Wait, take sixpences only, so there's no point trying to stuff pennies in. And before you ask, no, I haven't any change. I wanted to know how my husband is this morning. Well, why don't you ask him? Because he's in hospital here. Oh, right, sorry. Uh, afraid you'll have to wait for visiting hours. Ah, oh, Mrs Graham. <laughs> um, could I have a word? You see, I don't think those fish could have caused the poisoning. The ones in the pond seemed quite healthy. It killed me. Made me promise to keep my mouth shut. It didn't come from pond. He were fishing on private land. Poaching. Come in. I'm sorry to interrupt, Doctor. You asked for these test results as soon as they came in. Oh, thank you, Matron.
Mr. Graham, the blood tests indicate that you're suffering from mercury poisoning. Mercury? I'm going to treat you with penicillamine. Now, you may feel some side effects, loss of appetite, disturbed digestion. Couldn't be any worse than it is now. It's vital we know how the mercury got into your system. Your wife mentioned that you were fishing on private land. <laughs> well, she had no business to shoot her mouth off. Well, she was doing the right thing. Right now, I'm not interested in whether you broke the law or not. I need to know where that fish you ate came from, so that we can stop others being poisoned. What do you think you're doing here? Well, I can't understand it. They were perfectly healthy a few days ago. Whatever's poisoned your fish probably poisoned my patient. His own fault. He had no right to be fishing on private property. Well, aren't you concerned about what's causing this? Of course I am. And I intend to find out. But I'm also concerned about illegal fishing in my river. Mr. Archer, I'd like to take this dead fish in a water sample for analysis, if I may. Go ahead. Well, let's get one thing straight. When I find out the name of your patient, I intend to prosecute him for poaching. Just like I'll prosecute whoever caused this. So, how is the patient today? He seems to be better, Doctor. Well, your temperature's back to normal. Those spots of yours, well, they're going to itch for some time. But the good news, Keith, is that you're through the worst of it. Huh? All right. Taking its toll on us, though. Barry's been at his side 24 hours. The same when he was a baby. Sat up all night, watching over him many a time. Is he all right? Exhausted. Came over with a raging headache. He's resting up. He does too much, really. Well, shall I pop up and see him? No need. As I'm here. She says she's lost a sixpence. Ah, I see. So this is it. He sneaked it in whilst you were away, Mr Middleditch. I did no such thing. It was sanctioned by the authority. And it looks like it's gone wrong again. It has not gone wrong. Right. One sixpence. Watch! Into the slot. Select beverage. Tea with sugar. Press the button. Simple. Fit as a fiddle normally, aren't I, Sheila? I play rugby regularly. I'm just tired with tending to our keys, you know. Yes, well, he's definitely got a rash there. Just a bit run down. Just glad our keys going to be all right. That's the main thing. And your temperature is a little high. Sorry to interrupt, Doctor. Your surgery's on the phone. Oh, right. Thank you. Stay in bed, keep warm, and uh, try and catch up on some sleep. And maybe give the rugby a miss this weekend. Don't worry, Doctor. What's wrong with that? It doesn't look, smell, or taste like tea. That's what's wrong with it. Come on, Mrs Bridges. The workforce are unhappy, Mr Middleditch. We want it out. It's nothing to do with the workforce. You've got your own kettle. It's to supply the public under current health authority refreshment guidelines. We don't need it at the Royal. We need Edna and a trolley. What do you say, Mr Middleditch? I say that as you have your own kettle, maybe you'd invite me back to your den for a decent cup of tea. Yeah. I've sent samples from the lake to the lab for analysis. I need you to confirm that's where the fish you ate came from. I'm not saying anything that'll incriminate me. My wife should have kept her mouth shut. You're lucky to be alive. Other people are at risk. Was that where the fish came from? Off the record, yes. Thank you. Mr Harper's correct when he says it's a health authority decision. As I understand it, this is a trial run. Ah, so it might not be permanent. 
Well, that rather depends on how successful the machine proves to be. Or how unsuccessful. Exactly. Excellent cup of tea, this. Any chance for top-up? Oh, uh, sorry to interrupt. I was hoping for a word with Ken. Your reports and repeat prescriptions, Doctor. Thanks, Lizzie. Right. Oh, be an angel. Track down Edna and get me a nice cup of tea, will you? Ah. Uh. Oh. Sugar. Doctor. I'll brought myself. Bring one to you. Thanks, Lizzie. Well, there's a few factories around here that produce a bit of mercury waste. There are strict guidelines about how it's disposed of. And a lot of cowboys in the trade. There's money to be made if you can do it on the cheap. Mm. Well, there was no sign of dumping in the lake itself, but there was a couple of streams that feed into it. I thought we might take a look. Come in. From Lizzie? Ah, thank you, sister. That's, uh, I suppose well. Well, one good turn deserves another. My knee. Oh, right. Good. Was there anything else? No. No, it mustn't detain you. Thanks for the tea. Not at all. All part of my duties. Oh, no. Encephalitis. Doctor? Have you ever come across a case of that in your wards? No, I can't say I have. I thought it was extremely rare. But I think I may have found a case of it in one of my patients. Please lock me away And don't allow the day Here inside Hello, good to see you. Is it? You're not having second thoughts about us, are you? I don't no, it's not. It's like that song says, I only have eyes for you. <laughs> no. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Have you got a minute? Just about it. Young Anita and this Rose Festival. Yes? Well, I was wondering if she could still go. In a wheelchair, say. Because it'd really make her day. I'll think about it. And it would be great publicity for the hospital. Local paper involved. Pictures of you and her. Attractive doctor climbs down cliff to save girl's life. And then ensures she enjoys a big day. Any decisions regarding Anita will be made on a strictly medical basis, OK? Oh, and for future reference, these, um, these corny attempts at flattery may actually work on other susceptible females. Unfortunately, they're entirely wasted on me. Frankie! I need an ambulance. Come on. He tried to get up. He fell over. He looked like he was having a fit. He's feverish. What is it? Better give him something to stop those convulsions. And then we've got to get him to a hospital. Fast. Come on, Ken, let's get back. There's nothing here. Hey, what's that? Well spotted, Ken. I reckon we found what we're looking for. OK, straight in. How's it looking? It's encephalitis. He's been in contact with the Viracella Zoster virus. His son has chickenpox. Oh, God. All we can do now is offer him 24-hour systemic care and pray. This is my fault. Gordon, no, it isn't. You couldn't possibly have known. I saw him when I visited his son. I was concerned. I came back here to look up the symptoms. But it was too late. Damn. Damn it. You've come to plead for your thieving patient, Doctor. You can forget it. I told you. I'm going to prosecute. I've come to tell you I've found the source of the pollution. Well, that's good news. Somebody's going to get a hefty bill from me for restocking this river. Cans of mercury waste were dumped in a ditch near a stream that feeds into your river. Mercury? Hmm. I've informed the police, 
They're gonna contact the factory responsible. You what? This is my company. This comes from my factory. But I employ a local firm to dispose of waste products. Or well, they've let you down. But it was your responsibility to check them out. Anyway, I have informed the police. They'll be wanting details from you. I mean, I could be held responsible for this. And possibly. And if you prosecute my patient for illegal fishing, he may well counter claim against you for gross negligence. Good day. It's an inflammation of the brain and central nervous system caused by the chickenpox virus. Chickenpox? I thought you couldn't get that again. He had it as a boy. Immunity isn't always certain. He's a very strong man, is my Barry. He'll be all right, won't he? We're doing everything we can. But it, it is very serious. You don't think he's going to pull through, do you? We need to bring his temperature down. Work on his chest as well. Mercury poisoning is very serious, Mr. Graham. I don't think I know that. I nearly died, remember? Well, you should have been honest with me from the start. I'm the victim here. What are you having to go at me for? That lake feeds into a river. By withholding information, you put a lot of people at risk. Anyway, you'll have to stay in for some time. It may even take months to fully recover. Hi, Mr. Sadler. Hey, doctor. I'll just tell you my mate. How absolutely boring it is in here. We should try it for a living. My neighbour, she can't stay overnight. She has work tomorrow. We'll call you at once, if there's any change. I can't take it all in. You will let me know if... Of course. Thought I'd stay behind for an hour, see if I can get this finished by tonight. Good idea. You like mechanical things, cars, engines and that, don't you? Well, I know a bit about them. How do vending machines work? Oh, I don't know. I've never driven one. <laughs> mm. Oh, come to see how the float's getting on, Doctor. I, uh, I want to work with Alan, actually. Oh, thank you. I oh, know. Some boring safety meeting's come up. Oh, poor you. I'm sorry. But I promise I'll make it up to you tomorrow night. You're cheating hard. Thank you, Papa. Can't wait. Oh, look at you, you're exhausted. You need to get some rest. Come home. The nurses will call you if necessary. I know that. I, I just want to see him through it. If you'd acted straight away, this virus was in his system. This isn't your fault, Gordon. I know that too. But it doesn't really help, does it?
to be a long night. Have you tried waking him up? I'm not going anywhere near him without earplugs. Oh, this is ridiculous. Mr. Sadler? Oh, thank goodness. Mr. Sadler, wake up. Give him another shoe. I just get him up. I need to give him some. Trolley, I suppose. Wheel him out to the car park. Yes, Mr. Sadler! <laughs> come on! Wake up! Now, you carry on like that, Mr. Sadler. I'll take you down to casualty and I'll have your nostrils stitched up. <laughs> yeah, too true. <coughs> yeah, that's too what it was. That'll be too good for him, <laughs> Oh, Lord, no. Sometimes you just feel so useless. I hate this job. No. No, you don't. I better call his wife. Sorry. Oh, Doctor, I managed to get a babysitter for Keith. Mrs. Price. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Price. We did everything we could. He would want you to carry on, you know. He loved his family. He would have wanted Keith and you to try and be brave now. Oh, poor Keith. I don't want him thinking that it was his chicken pox that did this to him. It's bad enough he lost his dad. <laughs> he lost his dad. <laughs> I know. It will get easier. It will get easier, Sheila. I you it will. So it looks like the snoring is directly linked to the drinking. So I suggest you cut down on the evening whiskey. Don't worry, he'll be going on the wagon full time. He said cut down. 
You didn't say give up altogether. I've had enough. There'll be no alcohol in our house from now on. Oh, well, cheer up. If the snoring stops, then you'll both be able to share the same bedroom again. Was there really nothing I could have done, Jill? Look, transferring him to another hospital wouldn't have made any difference. You know that, Gordon. Sometimes there's just nothing we can do. Is, uh, is this the kind of thing you had in mind, Doctor? Oh, Alan, that looks great. We, um, we thought we'd try and bring a smile to somebody's face. There you are. Just the job. You think she'll be there for the big day then, Doctor? If we're careful, yes. But tell her to watch. They won't let me be Rose Queen in a wheelchair, will they? Well, probably not, but you never know. Come on. Sister Bridget wants to see you in this. Um, some of our health authority are also on the festival committee. Now, Mr Middleditch is trying to persuade them that having a royal patient as a Rose Queen might be good publicity all round, so we'll see, OK? Be on the back. And here we are again, back in reception. Well done, TJ. I must say, the hospital's in tip-shop shape. Oh, thank you. Perhaps you'd like some refreshment from our new Vendy snacks machine. Ah, Mr Harper encouraged the authority to try this out. How's the reaction been? Oh, um, early days. Why not try a cup yourself? I've uh, some change here, if you'd like to uh, give me your orders. Tea for me, please, one sugar. Tea's all round. Oh. I'll do it. I won't any mistakes, deliberate or otherwise. Suit yourself. Mr Harper will take responsibility for your tea. I take it that you're not too keen on this machine yourself, TJ. Hospitals traditionally rely a lot on tea and sympathy. You can get tea of a kind from that machine, but very little sympathy. Mm. There you are, Mr Hallows. One tea with sugar. Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> are you all right, Charles? Perhaps we should reassess our policy on vending machines. So, very wise thought. Ah, and here she is. Perhaps I can persuade you then to let Anita still do the honours on the big day. If you can provide me with a proper cup of tea and take this foul taste out of my mouth, <laughs> you can persuade me to do anything. <laughs> Good riddance. I couldn't put it better myself. Well, gentlemen, how about a nice cup of tea? As Rose Festival Queen, to give you a present, I mean to present you with these roses. Thank you very much, my dear.
be so small. God gave us the technology to help your son. Luke's blood is his soul. What's going on? No! Come back here! Mr. Howard! I've got to go down, kid. This man could be having a brain hemorrhage. Get an ambulance now!